And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LaunchableSignals.com and TradersHoppingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Tuesday, July 6th, 2021. Markets put in a little bit of a surprise today in that the expectation for the S&P was that it would continue to rally but correct in a shallow uh, correction. And that was not the case today. The uh, market did during Globex uh, yesterday afternoon, or early evening, did put in a new high up at uh, 4348, I believe the actual high was. And then just kind of started to come off. And I was thinking, okay, small little wave four, and we'll go back up and we'll start getting up into those levels at uh, 4358. I think it was yesterday at the time that I thought could go complete this third, <clears throat> um, excuse me, the, the wave three, the sub sub my, my new wave three, and then pull back in a four. That's not the case. It did finish the uh, triple sub three and then the triple sub four. And it does seem like it kind of, you know, you would wonder, it's like, wow, it, it dropped back uh, 45 points. And that was pretty deep, but it actually just came back to uh, the uh, corrective phase of one lesser degree. That's all it did. And so that was kind of interesting that it, it did hold within that relationship that we look for. Uh, it just seemed deep because the third wave was so large. To the correction fit into uh, support. In fact, it had support only down to 4,300. And it just couldn't break below this level, 4,247 or 40, 48, we'll call. So, and I would have started to get questionable had it started to break down below 4,300 by very much. Uh, so, but it didn't. And it, it held its ground and then rallied back. So what I've done is I've updated the labeling. Uh, this is a sub, sub, sub minute third, and then a sub, sub, sub minute four. So we're very, very granular counting these last legs up for this very 12 year, 13 year advancing sequence, uh, which is basically just gonna even complete just a primary third wave. If you remember all the way up at that top, what we're looking for is a completion of a primary third wave and setting the stage for a primary fourth wave correction, which again, I'm expecting to be rather large, uh, more than likely is gonna drop us back to the areas of the March 2020 lows at the start of the pandemic, uh, before we start to put in a large rally uh, sequence again. Now, what can we expect from here? I absolutely did like how the market regained its composure and rallied back against a, a stronger decline over in the broader market. Uh, so the Dow and the Russell, the Russell was taking it on the chin today and actually was the indicator that gave us the clue that those markets were gonna head lower because they started to pound on the Russell early. And, uh, and then of course the Dow was at one point, I believe down 400 something. So it was quite quite a, uh, a little bit of a slide. And <clears throat> even though the NASDAQ was up for the better part of today, it also got caught up and had to drop. And it got negative for a little bit there. But again, it also was just a fourth wave correction. So these markets, the two, the NASDAQ and the S&P, continue to basically follow the same pattern, um, which is why I was a little bit surprised because the S&P got dragged out today versus I think if it would have just um, had not been, well, of course, it would have gone, gone up with the, SM, with the NASDAQ, um, but I think it would have gone up much, much more, of course. Now, what can we expect for tomorrow? I am continuing to look for uh, the completion of the triple sub sequence. It's a five-wave sequence. So we're in wave five, and now that wave three and four are done, I've added an additional layer of what we can expect. So here we go. Let's take a look. The, the first spot is going to be 4,351. Now that does put in a new high, but it's kind of on the low end of the scale of where I would think this would complete. 
So that I'm not looking for. In fact, earlier I was looking for the S&P to come up here uh, to complete, which is where this sub, sub wave three that we're working on completing would be equal in length to wave one. So now that this wave three got close, I think the wave five is going to go above that, above that. 4,365 would be kind of a, a logical area, but 4,379 is going to be the more uh, common stopping point for this wave five, because that's where wave five would be equal to 62% of the length of the third wave. Now, can, does it have to stop there? Absolutely not. It can go on up to 44,000. So if indeed, the, the switch gets flipped and we see more downside activity in the NASDAQ, but the Russell, the S&P and the Dow tend to just fill in their gaps today and move higher, then I think, yeah, we could have a strong enough rally to push it at least to new highs and likely up towards this level. Now remember, that's just going to be completing this five wave sequence. So we would then put a sub sub third up to wherever this tops out. Then we're getting an additional fourth wave and an additional fifth wave up. And again, that fifth wave would be expected to subdivide in and of itself. So we still have a, enough movement left that I, I am still expecting at least above 4,400 with a chance that it's going to get up here into this zone. So now we're seeing how things continue to line up, up in here. We've added another layer here and another or bigger layer right here. So now the first zone basically goes from uh, 4,000, let's say 4,400, because it's 99.50. We'll say 4,400. Then we have 4,412. 425, 450, 53, 71, 77. So we've got a cluster, a cluster right here. So this cluster that we can't really see which what the numbers are, but we could have put a cursor on it. That's where I think that this sub, sub, sub five waves will complete up in here. Then we get a pullback. And so it's going to be this next one that'll just stair step its way higher but eventually has a strong probability and possibility of getting itself to 4,500 before all is said and done. So that still remains in. Uh, I imagine, you know, as, as we're trading today, a lot of that thought was like, well, it's never gonna get there and blah, blah, blah. But again, we have to allow the market to tell us the market did nothing unusual other than finish a third, put in a fourth, and then pick up the rally again. So it continues to follow the pattern that we're looking for. Uh, and now we just have to trust that it's gonna get up <clears throat> to the heights that we're looking for. So uh, for tomorrow, I'm looking for the triple sub minute five to work higher, get us up to new high, start getting into these resistance zones to complete. Once done, again, look for another probably sharp, sharper type of a, just a, a quick sell-off uh, like we saw today for it to put in a little bit larger fourth wave because it's gonna be on the sub, sub level, wave four, and then for the fifth wave to start to kick in. Whether that all takes place tomorrow, finishing this, this sequence with a five, putting in a four and picking up the five, yet to be seen. Stranger things have happened, but at least we now have the sequence that we should be following. And so we'll know once we are complete with this uh, triple sub five, with five up again into this zone, then I'm going to be looking for a fourth wave to bring it back down into this zone and then a fifth wave to begin. That's about as far as I would go for the, for the day, because again, we're in the summer months. Uh, it is slower. We had decent buying today, but I think a lot of that came on the downside. So it wasn't like it was new buyers coming in. I think it was, it was you know, accounts rotating, shifting, but there were 
the cells were larger than the bodies. So I'm going to leave it there, but just continue to suggest that no matter what, we trade what's in front of us. The market is always perfectly priced at any given point. These are just fact that we need to accept um, and to realize that, yes, once more we have an anomaly or somebody's, uh, you know, the fat finger push and it, it's an error and that can cause a zip in either direction. Um, but for the most part, it is following the rules and the guidelines within Elliott for the waves that are in and underway. So the fourth wave correction did not break any rules, did not uh, slip past expected levels that it should have gotten to. So that remains the case. And so I'm gonna to continue to look forward to, to do that, get up to a new high, does not have to be a whole lot. So again, anywhere up in here can finish it, can finish this sub, sub, sub level advance. The fourth wave again should be sharp, bringing it back in. All is gonna be tradable. Trade what's in front of you, use your moving averages, Use the support and resistance lines and levels that are present on the chart. Run your Fibonacci so that you can get retracements for the fourth wave. What's it going to be? You're going to have to go all the way down to here, all the way up to where that high is, because that's the entire wave three to find out where the wave four is going to be expected. And so you would just take retracements, not extensions, but retracements from this low up to wherever this tops out. And then that's going to give you where we can expect it to go to. Remember, most common for fourth wave is 0.382, then it's 0.5, and then on the outside, on the outside, that's not what I would be expecting, but it can happen. You can get a uh, 618 retracement for a fourth wave. And what it can't do, if it gets up there, it cannot drop below the fourth, uh, the first wave here, and that's going to be right there at uh, 42, 42.50. That, that fourth wave cannot drop below, because then it just invalidates the whole thing. So that's where I'm going to leave it. The next update will be Wednesday, July 7th.